This is Tammy Lear. We are at ISC West, and I am with Mr. Rob Zivney. And thank you for coming out, Mr. Zivney. We appreciate it. Glad to be here. Yes, thank you. And he is the uh, vice president of standards for Identive Group, government and standards. And this is a very specific role. He has so many different hats he wears. However, anything dealing with personal identification, verification, and the standards relating to that. Uh, and we're here to talk a lot about the, the blend. Mr. Zivney, yes. welcome for coming, visiting Thank us, you. our studio live. And when we're talking about physical security and IT security, those used to be two very different things. Now they've merged together. Tell us about that. Well, the applications are the same, but what's happened is uh, to make our products more cost effective, we've integrated in IP technology, the network technology of Ethernet and the Internet uh, into our system. So it's only natural that they, they work on the IT infrastructure. In fact, the government has defined physical security systems to be part of the IT inventory. So we have to not only have the technology, but know how the IT folks work as well. And do you feel that has has there been you know a few little bumps and a lot of bumps. Along? Yeah, a lot, of <laughs> a speed lot. Bumps. yeah okay so a big part of both physical and logical security of course is the smart card yes and what that provides access to what are the challenges when implementing the smart card well one of the, the goals to be achieved is it really gives you an interoperable visitor management system where one agency can uh, take their card and use that for access in another agency with all the permissions being in place. Uh, so it means the agencies had to work together. They had to go write new standards from scratch. Uh, that was the, fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, the U.S. hadn't done a lot with smart cards yeah. prior to that. Some of the agencies, DOD and State Department, but uh, they had to develop a whole process of how you're okay. going to properly interview someone, vet them, background checks, issue the card. And it's not just a number anymore, but it's got all the trust framework in there with cryptography. So uh, they had to stand up a whole new infrastructure. So did the standards uh, increase or were there current standards that were already being implemented and they just became more prevalent? Uh, well, for our industry, we're faced with all kind of new standards. They okay. had to, even though there was good products for biometrics, for instance, that are right. part of used with the card, uh, they had to make sure that it wasn't a proprietary of any one manufacturer. So the government st stood up a new standard that everybody could use. How about the technical standards? Uh, lots of technical. It's a whole... It's a. A and library of standards, mount. yes. Right. And right now we're on our five-year window of review, so uh, it's kind of like building an airplane in the air sometimes. But uh, they're they're coming along and upgrading and reviewing everything, and so it's like the standards never cease in terms of change. So we have right. to have a very flexible solution, very flexible architecture. Right, and always willing and able to change at the drop. Got to right? work with a lot of people. Right. Yeah. Flexibility is power, they say. So the Federal Office of Management and Budget in February issued a memo regarding the implementation of the HSPD-12. And Can you tell us about what OMB, OMB said and what this means for the industry? Well, HSPD-12 came out in 2004 mm -hmm. after 9-11, and it's a Homeland Security Presidential Directive 12. And it, was a, it created the PIV card, the Personal Identity Verification mm -hmm. Card, and said you're going to use it for access to uh, facilities and assets. And so... Uh, the first five years they focused on issuing the cards. And so OMB says now the focus is going to be on using the cards. So the mandate said start putting the systems out there and right. using the systems and, and don't let budget uh, be a factor because this will be a high priority in your budget process. So make sure it's, uh, in, it's there. in there. Even if budgets get tighter, uh, and go, go faster, one. go now. Uh, don't let money be an excuse for not doing it. That's smart. That's smart. And some people, they're concerned with the technology with the smart, smart card. It might be too smart particularly the RFID biometrics, and it could ne negatively affect privacy. Has that come up as a question or a little issue for well, some? Well, that's like five questions. <laughs> but uh, no, the smart card is you really, it's, well. a, it's mm -hmm. a computer on a chip. Okay. And so it's got all the horsepower of a computer, so you can run several applications in it. Biometrics is an application. Okay. Uh, we, we do have um, RFID, or radio frequency identification. Uh, they've used that term for the old wave-and-go type prox cards, but with the new one, it's at a higher frequency. And, uh, and then the concerns, yeah. do you feel that people have privacy the concerns? Oh, they do, they do. Uh, in some of the Homeland Security, the privacy, as long as you tell people what you're going to use it for and you, you safeguard the information, you can overcome some of the privacy issues. But there's still a concern about sniffing the card. That's why they have dual interface. You have both contact and contactless. Where there's a concern, some of the agencies are using the contact interface. Okay, very so good. So they're working in these, this new set, this next round, the next five-year window, they're working on some new technologies that make sure that the communication is encrypted and more secure. So okay. they're continuing to address the privacy issues through technology. Very good. Do you see a day, Mr. Zivney, where uh, everyone's form of identification would be through a smart card? Do you see well, one thing we'll probably never have, at least by the name, uh, 
a national ID card. But they're using smart cards for a lot of different things. Uh, one of the things we're seeing now is you don't want a wallet full of ID cards, even if they're smart cards. Uh, and with RFID or contactless, one of the directions is toward using the cell phone. And so we're looking at new form factors. It may not be a card in the future because it's just the chip in there that does the work. Right. So, and with wireless, you might have a cell phone that you tap and go to get into a theatrical event or to get onto a transportation system or, or to, to pay for something. And uh, it's quite possible the evolution could go in that direction. Okay. And then so that could be your identity. So one of the things we're concerned about is safeguarding privacy, exactly. identity theft. And so some of the extra strong authentication measures that are implemented here are for the, the citizen's benefit of identity protection. So strong authentication works both ways. So I see more universal. So you see that it could go with the masses, but at the same time not compromise if it's done properly, right? Yes. Okay. And, and that's okay. what uh, a lot of international standards bodies are working on is the technologies okay. and the standards to ensure uh, you have a benefit. It's, and what do you see the role that SIA plays in identity, identity management issues that come up? Well, first of all, SIA uh, represents the security industry. In fact, when I testified before Congress on this subject, you know, what is, right. uh, on behalf of the industry, you know, SIA certainly has a strong government relations activities. Uh, they're a standards body, an ANSI standards body, so we develop a lot of our own standards. So we're creating some of the standards for physical access that use the smart card for logical and physical access. Uh, and so the government doesn't write all the standards. When industry has uh, official standard development organizations, they'll embrace us. So we work closely with government for developing standards as well as influencing theirs. And you have a lot of influence within that. Apparently, recently here, you've expanded your role within Identive. Tell us where, what that would look like for you. Well, that's been exciting. Uh, certainly, uh, I've been with Hersh Electronics, right? which is one of the leaders, certainly in the government area, mm -hmm. of physical access control. But Identive has SEM microsystems and other business units that, that make the cards and the laminates. And so I get to do the broader thing. Where we talk about using one card for logical and physical access, you know, that's right there in my wheelhouse now. Right, exactly. So you yeah. have access, so you blend the two. So you're you're moving with the times as we've got these are not two different things. Well, we're they, trying to stay one step ahead. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I like that. Very good. Mr. Zivney, thank you so much thank for you. joining us today live. Very good at CS Studio Live. We have Mr. Rob Zivney with Identive, and we are happy to have him here and he will educate, educate, educate. So thank you, sir. You Appreciate bet. that.